So, uh, continuing with this unit on critical and not critical, but on creative and on creative thinking and innovation. Uh, I'm correcting on the screen. You can see uh, critical thinking and innovation. Uh, we have noted that this course has to do with thinking about with uh, creatively. It's about thinking creatively and innovatively, and eventually solve world problems. The world problems can only be solved by creative people. And uh, you noted the other time that uh, we looked at uh, trying to define creativity and innovation and then went on to talk about creative thinking techniques and skills, types of creative thinking, models of creative thinking, the creative process and its, and its practical application. We shall continue with it. Nature and nurture in creativity and innovation. The role of quality education in, in development of creativity and innovation. Gender issues uh, in creativity and innovation. We shall look at where can we play out gender issues. Issues of men and women. There's also creativity and innovation in professions. That is in research and academic disciplines. How can you be creative when working out uh, professional issues, academic issues, research-based issues. The other one is creativity and innovation in leadership and development. How can we make our societies grow through creativity and innovation? And uh, we look at uh, what are the ethical issues in creativity and innovation. In other words, what are unethical and what are ethical issues? So those are not issues we can avoid. These are issues we keep on uh, uh, looking at from time to time. We shall keep going back to them. Now, bringing the diagram that we gave out when handling critical and creative thinking, you can see that diagram on your screen that shows philosophy topping uh, because of the so-called Socratic questioning that you find in critical thinking. Then creativity came, and creativity gave birth to sociology. And within creativity, uh, creative thinking, it brought natural sciences. And you know what are natural sciences? Chemistry, biology, physics, botany, zoology. And within uh, the same creativity, sociology also uh, gave birth to social sciences at the same time, and which is anthropology, demography, economics, political science, ecology, history, human geography, all these came because of uh, uh, creative thinking. And also it gave birth to arts, sociologization, philosophizing, all these gave birth to music, literature, drama, painting. A lot of things keep coming, even business. Because of creativity, creative thinking and innovation is everything. If you are creative and innovative, you can conquer the world. You know, Karl Marx used to say, give me 26 armies, I'll conquer the world. You know, that means he was asking 24 letters of the alphabet. And the moment he was given, he took a pen and a paper. He wrote and developed a communist manifesto, creatively and created a, a world of his own imagination, which almost got practicalized. When Russia, U.S. Union of Soviet Socialist Republics became communists after the Russian Revolution of 1917, and of course Chinese Revolution of 1949, and of course even East Germany was also communist because of the com Karl Marx writings, the 26 armies, that is the letters of the alphabet, the 26 of them give birth to something great. So when you are creative and innovative, you go far, very far. We have to repeat this. So uh, there are quite a number of things we noted. We talked about what is the nature of creativity. We noted that creativity is the intellectual ability to make creations, to make inventions, intellectual ability to, dis to have more discoveries that brings 
novel relations, entities, and or unexpected solutions into existence. So creativity is a gifted ability, ability of humans in thinking, inference, problem solving, and product development. So creativity is the basis of our human nature, and it is a product of both biological and cultural evolution. It explains the good and the evil that defines us as an individual, as a society, and as species. So we went on to talk about what are creative thinking tools. They are there. We, I don't want to appear repetitive, but I repeat it because of reinforcing those points. Because as we move on and on, we shall be, we shall be well grounded. We shall be well founded. We will be well uh, prepared to, to move high in the high ski, skies and fry and fry high. So we are talking about these creative thinking tools. One of them is tools, not tool, tools. Mm, in Swahili, is silaha, yakazi the tools of working. One is brainstorming. I now want to explain what is brainstorming. Brainstorming is a group creativity technique by which F efforts or efforts are made to find a conclusion for a specific problem by gathering a list of ideas spontaneously contributed by its members. So it is spontaneous. Brainstorming is spontaneous. Nobody is forced. It is a question of members con contributing ideas spontaneously, not by co coercion, dictatorship, or force. Okay? And you focus in brainstorming. We focus on a specific problem. That is the science of brainstorming. You don't look at everything that happens on earth. Rather, you spot out what idea you want to tackle as a team, as a group. The other tool of uh, creative thinking is brain writing. And in brain writing, it is a group structured brainstorming technique. It's a group brain writing is a group structured brainstorming technique that is aimed at aiding innovation process by stimulating creativity developed by one man by name Bernard Roebuck who originally uh, this uh, Robert uh, this gentleman who came up uh, with the uh, uh, brain lighting Bernard Roebuck originally published it in a German sales magazine in 1968 Yes, the, the journal was called Absa's Quizcraft. Ab, Absa Swishaft. Ab, Absa Sishwat. Switch Swishaft. That is in 1968. That's this is a German once that I'm also struggling to, to kind of. My German speaking is not uh, polished. So that is it. So you can see the whole idea of brain lighting is a group structure and brainstorming technique aimed at aiding innovation process by stimulating creativity developed by this gentleman. So, and in this brain lighting, it enables everyone to share their creative ideas. So write what you have, what you think. And then of course, it is within, uh, it is within the brain uh, brainstorming but there is now the introduction of writing in the whole matter, okay? And it is meant to aid the, this innovation process. We also talked about levers brainstorming as a tool, as a creative thinking tool. Brain, I mean levers brainstorming. And this one is a technique that builds on our natural ability to more easily see problems than solutions, okay? And instead of asking a group to brainstorm ideas, that would work. The group brainstorms all the ways that they could cause a plan to fail. 
So in such a situation, because it is reverse brainstorming, the group leader leads the, the team to look at what can make this plan we are having to fail. So you reverse it, you put it upside down uh -huh, by focusing on the problems, not now the solution, but you reverse and focus on the problems rather than the solutions. The other one is star busting. Uh, star busting is a form of brainstorming that focuses on generating questions rather than answers. Okay? This is the issue now of questions. Star busting. You have heard of crane busters. But here it is star busting. Uh, which can be used iteratively uh, with further layers of questioning about the answers to the initial set of questions. For example, a colleague suggests a new design of ice skating boot. You see, it's a question of uh, 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 focusing on or generating questions rather than answers. So you keep asking questions more uh, rather than answer. At the end of it all, you have a very important tool uh, of creative thinking, a very important uh, tool, very good equipment for going about creative thinking. Sometimes questions can just take you there. Okay, the other one we talked about, if you can remember, is charrette procedure. Uh, you may pronounce it carrot procedure. I need to check the, the right pronunciation. Carrot, the carrot procedure or the charret uh, procedure. Uh, the charret or the carrot procedure works by organizing people into smaller groups. You then brainstorm ideas in one group at a time until all groups have had the opportunity to brainstorm. You see the output from each group session as input to the next meeting. So you put people in small groups in order to discuss the same topic like why a student getting less and less and less yet we are in a city where you expect one of the biggest cities in east africa it is here and we are getting less and less students are we marketing our institution in the right way are we telling people the good news about our institute our institution the good news about the courses offered from the diploma the bachelor's degree, the master's degree, the doctoral degrees. Once we do that through small groups, okay, they'll brainstorm and then the, the presentations that they have uh, through this charret procedure uh, you will be able to form the agenda for the next meeting. The other one we talked about, if you can remember, we talk about Crowphone's strip writing method. Crowphone's strip writing method. No explanations were given the other time because that is not the time. Today is the day to talk about these things. So Crowphone's strip writing method involves handing out strips of paper which are used by participants to write down their ideas okay at the start of the meeting you will need to highlight in detail the problems of all topics that are going to be addressed and the time limit that you are uh, you are to join to allocate to each one person that you are to join to allocate to each one uh, each member of this group Okay, so that is strip writing method. That involves handing out strips of paper which are used by participants to write down their ideas. Okay, and that is from the very start of the meeting. 
Okay, the other one that we may already say we mentioned is a round bean, round bean brainstorming, round bean brainstorming. Now, with round bean brainstorming, it is an activity in which ideas evolve as they are passed from person to person. Now, the power of this method is that ideas emerge from corrective input for everyone takes a turn. Okay? It's a round bin, okay? Or round robin, rather. Okay? And everyone takes a turn. Uh, that's why it's round. As you inherit another's idea, think critically about what you are given, but don't let it limit your own thinking. Thus, round bin option is a technique for generating and developing ideas in a group brainstorming setting. That is a very, very important tool of creative thinking. Another tool of creative thinking is, maybe the last one for now, is role storming, law storming. Now, uh, role storming is an evolution of brainstorming, whereby you, you take on another identity. It was developed by Greeks, a man by name Greeks, in 1985 and described in details by another one, Van Gude, in 1988. So it is an idea of storming was developed by Greeks in 1985, but Van Gude in 1988 developed it, developed it further, okay, by broader description. Now, in this raw storming, viewing problems and solutions from a different standpoint works. It views problems from and solution, both problems and solutions from a different standpoint. It is trying to be creative. Okay, and that is a very important tool of creative thinking. One can try another identity. Obviously, this can be done many times for many different characters. So you can play a role, yes, because role playing itself is defined as pretending to be someone else or pretending to be in a specific situation that you are not actually in at that time. An example of role playing is when you pretend that your friend is your boss and you have a practice conversation in which you ask for a raise. A role play interview, for example, is an exercise where candidates act out a scenario with a with either a group or an interviewer to determine how suitable the candidate is for a particular role. So role plays uh, test how candidates might approach difficult situations uh, that frequently occur in the areas where they got work. Of course, they are abroad raw praying and raw storming. They are not the same, but they are related. Because raw praying uh, is pretending to be someone else or pretending to be in a specific situation that you are not, especially when you are interviewed, you are told, can you, can you imagine you are the school principal? Yeah, you are school principal. And the school is set on fire by rural boys. How can you pray? What is the role play? Can you role play to demonstrate how you would stop the strike by students? And the role storming you hear is another one. It's an evolution of brainstorming whereby you take on another identity. You are taking still another identity. So there's a sense in which they are related but they are not the same. Hope you note the distinction. Now, having talked about raw storming as a tool of creative thinking, we'll move now to how do you develop creative thinking. We also handled this. And noted that uh, uh, 
you need brainstorming ideas that we have noted above to develop creative thinking. To develop it itself, you also need brainstorming. So you can underline brainstorming. It's a very important factor in creative thinking. Okay? Now, when we now, from there, we move to the second, uh, a second point to the, in answering the question, how do you develop creative thinking? We talked about role-playing scenarios. And we need to understand what are role-playing scenarios. And that is where I brought about pretending to be someone else. Okay, putting yourself in somebody else's shoe in order to explain how you would go about an issue that may trouble a company, a school, an institution, a university, when you are the big person, you are the dean, you are that person who is given responsibility and you are the person to tackle the problems therein. So there's also reframe the issue reframing the issue as, as a way of developing creative thinking, reframing the issue. Okay, one example of reframing is redefining a problem as a challenge. Such a redefinition activates a different way of being, of being a problem has a heavy uh, quality to it. Problem has a heavy quality to it, while the notion of a challenge is an enlivening. Another example and extremely important opportunity for reframing occurs during an angry interchange. Okay, so reframing is redefining a problem. So when you redefine a problem, uh, you start building creative thinking. Think of school debates. You are building from when you are young, your creativity, your brain is being trained to be creative. Uh, creative thinking, to be thinking creat creatively. Now, how do you go about that through school debate? You don't talk about what you like. You try to talk about what you hate. So you train your mind to be re reframing issues in order to talk in the opposite. And in so doing, uh, that training, though you know where you stand, you, it will push you to think harder, to support what you don't agree with, in order to test what another person who believes in that area can be. And that in itself makes your brain better. Of course, we talked about making the most of creative flow. And we also said another way is stay open-minded and flexible. The other way is keep your ego out of it. Okay? We talked about all that. We also define defined innovation. What does it refer to? Okay, uh, is a development of new methods of production. Now, when we talk about production, of course, we become economists, and this is supposed to be a general uh, unit, not for economists only, not for sociologists only, not for educationists only, for everyone, because innovation is not just about production in terms of in company in economic uh, discipline no no not necessarily so that is not our agenda to make it an economic unit for economists they start telling us we were taught in this fashion uh, this is the way to go we are trying to be a bit general in order to reach everyone because uh, development of new methods methods of production may mean even you becoming very productive as a teacher being very productive as a, as a community leader, as a village leader, as Nyumbakumi leader in your village. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is all about exploitation of a value-added novelty in economics and social spheres. But uh, in social sciences, we may just talk about just bringing, ushering in new ideas to move the society forward. And being innovative means how to make, if you are a teacher, for example, how do you innovate when, for example, you don't have enough laboratory? I mean, laboratory equipment. You can innovate. Sometimes you may, uh, you know, you may see whether there are things, uh, you, you can bring more people for one experiment, to do one experiment in the laboratory because you don't have enough equipment there. You can innovate sometimes 
uh, through innovation is broad anyway even non scientists even socially and we shall go on looking at how innovative can we be wherever we are in our very specific areas how can we make ourselves innovatives and uh, because uh, it is like we are becoming economists that's not the point now on and on we even introduced the other one invention after innovation we talked about invention and we said they are not the same thing so we ended up getting three concepts innovation invention and creativity or creativity invention and innovation and in invention we talked about creating of new ideas or concept or innovation we talked about the process of turning a concept into commercial success or widespread use not necessarily for commercial but for widespread use so from creativity we started by creativity where and then with criticality or crit critical thinking we came to creative thinking and then innovative thinking and then invention itself so invention looks like the end product what we achieve after doing all that we also compared the difference between creativity and innovation and we went on uh, to show uh, that creativity is a capability or act of conceiving something original or unusual or innovation is the implementation of something new innovation is the implementation okay or invention is the creation of something that has never been made before and is recognized as a product of some unique insight so invention goes beyond because you create something has never been there never been made okay okay but well innovation is the implementation of something new yes which is a byproduct of creativity so you can see the interrelationship within those concepts they are there you can see the interrelationships now i wanted us as we come we end the lecture today so, uh, we also go back to this uh, not just the innovative thinking skills uh, that leads to creative problem solving we talked about analytical thinking we then talked about work collaboratively we also talked about motivational drive we also talked about self-motivation and in self-motivation I may want to mention there so that I don't repeat a lot in self-motivation it is the ability to drive oneself to take initiative and action to pursue goals and complete tasks it is an inner drive to take action to create and to achieve it is what pushes you to keep going on tasks especially those you are pursuing because you want to not because someone told you to okay so there is that uh, and also we talked about adaptability and in adaptability uh, we may talk about adaptive creativity which refers to thinking that to thinking that applies to existing solutions techniques or products to new scenarios or changed conditions so you can talk about something else uh, uh, such as quantitative skills decision making risk taking industry related work experience i want us today to talk about innovative personalities very briefly again as we end the lecture today where we talk about innovative personalities are unconventional thinkers who can generate ideas that earn attention by strategically applying their talent for creativity they quickly solve problems with fresh and inventive solutions coming to this other section some of the greatest innovative innovators of all time some of the greatest innovators of all times they include sir isaac newton who lived between 1643 to 1727 and was an english mathematician physicist astronomer theologian and author who is widely recognized 
widely recognized as one of the greatest mathematicians and most influential scientists of all time and as a key figure in the scientific revolution. Although Isaac Newton is well known for his discoveries in optics or white light composition and mathematics or calculus, it is his formulation of the three laws of motion, the basic principles of modern physics for which he is most famous. The other one is Wright Brothers. Okay. Uh, this guy is Ovio and Wilbur Wright. Man and his brother uh, invented and flew the world's first successful airplane, airplane in 1903. Their persistence, experimentation, and work on the principles of flight made them legendary inventors and innovators. The other one, of course, there are quite a number. You can't exhaust them. I just mentioned them. But let me talk a little about Galileo Galilei. Galileo Galilei, the legendary Italian genius whose breakthrough ideas helped usher in the scientific revolution in the 17th century. Galileo is often called the father of modern science. First, to defend his views of heliocentrism against the Roman Inquisition and spending most of his life under house arrest for heresy or false teaching in religion. They are called heresy. Garirei, Garireo has become an icon of scientific integrity in the face of religious dogmatism. You can also talk of Steve Jobs, another a great innovator of all time, where Steve Jobs, the iconic American entrepreneur and founder of Apple, will go down history in history as one of the greatest innovators. And as the CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Apple in the 1980s and again in late 90s and the 2000s, Jobs, Steve Jobs, played a central role in the personal computer revolution and in developing its key products, including Macintosh, the iPod, and the iPhone. The other one is Nikola Tesla, a great inventor, engineer, and futurist. Tesla helped develop the AC electrical delivery system. In famous for his wound experiments, and colorful personality tells us creative work regarding the production and transmission of power was far ahead of his time. What about Bill Gates? Bill Gates is one of the greatest businessmen of philanthrop and philanthropists of the last century. Gates founded and built Microsoft into an unmatched, into an unmatched software behemoth before leaving to state the Bill and Merida Gates Foundation, a multi-billion dollar philanthropic enterprise working to enhance global health care and reduce poverty. You may talk of Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of the United States. Franklin was a brilliant polymath, inventor, political theorist, scientist, statesman, and writer. He had a prodigious scientific mind prodigious scientific mind and his interests varied widely but in addition to politics he is perhaps best known for his experiment with lightning and electricity another one leonard da vinci the original renaissance man da vinci is best known for his paintings okay uh, but he was also a philosopher engineer and inventor he left behind him a collection of extraordinarily prescient drawings depicting future technologies, okay, such as helicopter, tank, solar power, and so on. Now, think of uh, innovation in Africa since the ancient times. There were also ancient thinking, and we look at the uh, invention in Africa. We shall also look at invention and innovativeness in Africa uh, next time. But some of the greatest innovators of the last 30 years, 1990 to 2020, include 
Jeff Bezos. Okay? Founder of CEO of Amazon.com. Rare Page, co-founder and current CEO of Google. Okay? Page is leading one of the most innovative and successful companies in the world, perhaps in history. There is also Sanjay Brin, the multi-billionaire co-founder of Google. Brin has been involved with some of the company's most innovative techniques, including Google, Google Grass, Google self-driving cars. Okay? You know, self-driving cars in the web, it may look childish, but you see innovation and creativity has always been dismissed as childish. But it takes you places. Childish, not childish. There's also Aaron, Aaron Musk, a co-founder of PayPal. PayPal for money, money sending globally. Musk went on to found the electric car, car company Tesla and the space technology company SpaceX. There is also Reod Hoffman, founder of the pioneering social networking website, the one you call LinkedIn. It is founded by Reid Hoffman. LinkedIn, it connects people who are doing business so that you can know whom to contact through the web. Hoffman is a, is a Silicon Valley veteran who was also a, C, a CEO of PayPal. There is also Richard Branson. The colorful and creative British founder of Virgin Group is one of the most successful businessmen of our time, as well as a billionaire philanthropist and humanitarian. There is also Marisa Mayer, Marisa Mayer, the current CEO of Yahoo. Mayer was the first female engineer at Google, and at that degree was the youngest on Forbes list of the 50, 50 most powerful women in business. At that three. Now, another one is Shai Agassi, an Israeli entrepreneur. Agassi was the founder of the unsuccessful but innovative company Better Press, which pioneered a unique battery switching technology for electrical gas. Well, this endeavor didn't quite work. We can all get excited to see what Shai brings to the world next. Yeah, because she was the founder of the unsuccessful but innovative company Better Place. Okay. The other one is Salman Khan. Salman Khan is the founder of Khan Academy, a free non-profit online education platform. Khan's mission is to provide a world-class education for anyone, anywhere. Yeah. Now, if we had time, we could also look at... Uh, some of the greatest innovators since 1980s. We can mention them, just mentioning Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg is a billionaire co-founder and CEO of Facebook. Okay. Dustin Maskovitz, a former co-founder of Facebook with Mark Zuckerberg. You can also talk of Blake Ross, the pioneer founder of Mozilla Firefox project. You can also talk about Matt Brim. Brima or Matt Brima is a co-founder of General Assembly and Global Education Company that provides entrepreneurs with opportunities and education in technology, design and business. There is also Jack Andraka who was born in 1997, just the other day. But by the age of 15, he, has, he had already changed the world with his innovation. And Raka has developed a new way to detect pancreatic, ovarian, and lung cancer during early stages when there is a much higher likelihood of a cure. His inexpensive method, which could save countries' lives, won the 2020 Golden E. Moore Award, the grad prize of the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. The number six here is Esha Kare, another impressive young innovator who at the age of 18 created a tiny device that could charge a mobile phone in 20 to 30 seconds, a revolutionary technology she calls Super Capacito. She won the 2013 Intel Foundation Young Scientist Award 
for her invention and plans to use the prize money to pay for her tuition at Harvard University and continues her work as an inventor. Now, something else is to look at not just people, but habits that can help in developing innovative minds. You have heard of those people. Now, what are the methods that can help us develop innovative minds? Of course, we have covered a bit of it, but we can also remind one another that we need to maintain a keen sense of curiosity. There is also what you call John jot down ideas and thoughts. We shall look at jot down ideas later. Uh, seek, you can also seek, number three, we can seek out new experiences, practice mindfulness, take risks and make mistakes, share your ideas, stay persistent, take solitude breaks. Now, how do I know if I'm innovative? You know, some skills and qualities that go hand in hand with innovation are, number one, the, the confidence to take on big the confidence to try great ideas. That confidence, confidence can show, you can make you know that you are becoming innovative. That confidence to take on big ideas. Number two is ambitious goals and take risks. Ambitious goals. Some will tell you, ah, you'll be mad when you try great ideas. Oh, get ambitious goals and taking risks. They'll tell you, go mad. But those are fears. The other one is the ability to adapt and to be resourceful in unexpected situations. Ability to adapt. We note that adaptability somewhere up there. Adaptability and be resourceful in unexpected situations. The other number is motivation to identify where things can be improved and then act on it. Now, how you can become more innovative on a daily basis? One is start conducting stand-up meetings, okay? Your entire energy changes when you are studying. Number two, surround yourself with inspiration. Hey, things that inspire you, not that which depresses you, makes you feel useless, makes your parents useless, your society useless, your clients useless. Avoid depressive uh, uh, comments, talks, people. Just keep put a corner and don't tell them I am avoiding you. If they tell you things that will not inspire you, keep off from them without telling them because they will fight back to prove they are not bad, yet they are bad. But you also need to them, need to talk to people and interact fairly so that you are also social. You don't become an isolationist. So number three, get a buddy and or an innovative companion. A companion who is innovative will take you everywhere. You find yourself going far when you have innovative friends. Pick small projects, number four. Pick small projects and test yourself. Number five, free pure assumptions. Free pure assumption. We shall look at these things more in details. The other one is bring it to life. Number seven, burn things. Number eight, get out of the office. Like other scientists whose discoveries came when they were out there in the fields and not in their respective good offices. Get out of the office and venture into unknown. They are also the last points for today. Possible inventions in 2050. By 2050, we are in 2021. Possible invention by 2050. Let me speculate. There can be drone, drone solutions. Drones, those big drones. Drone solutions. Space vacations. Hyperloop. There can be also entire dependency on renewable energy. So renewable energy is something you should focus on entire dependency on renewable energy and it's coming you can see in our country it has begun there's also superhuman clothing superhuman clothing think about it we are thinking what is possible invention in 2050 i could be wrong but there can be and i'm neither i'm not a prophet neither am i a seer or diviner i'm only trying to think with you i want us to think together possible inventions in 2050 there could be things I'm not mentioning, like all enabled human robots and reincarnation of all the birth of people. You can tell me what will happen. Any comments?